Hello, here we go. Let's start up our slideshow. Let's make our new video. Let's talk some vocab, all the exciting stuff. Now, all the junior, all the English three teachers are making these videos together. So other teachers are making uh, the slideshows some weeks. And I want you to know <laughs> that right away. As it says, M's Code Vocab List number three, get ready for some gourd words this week. Now you can tell I didn't make this. Not because I'm above the pun. I'm not above the pun. Let's be very clear. I approve of the pun. But I would never say terrible pun I know. I would stand with it. I make no apologies for that pun. It totally works. It's decorative gourd season. Some of you will know that reference and why I can't say the rest of the joke. Let's get going. Haggard. I'm a bit haggard at the moment. I just woke up. It's very early in the morning. To be haggard is an adjective. It's having a gaunt, wasted, or exhausted appearance as from prolonged suffering, exertion, or anxiety. This can be after playing a sport with friends. This can be after pulling an all-nighter studying for school. This can be after partying a bunch over New Year's Eve. It's when you're just totally and completely worn out and you look worn out. Now, someone can look haggard, they can feel haggard, or they can be described as being haggard. Oh, I am haggard kind of thing. Now, it's not a compliment. But it's not exactly an insult. It's more just a statement of fact. Just, oh, man, you look really haggard. You go, yeah, I am. You wouldn't want to say it to someone as they're, like, getting ready fresh for the day and they feel good about themselves. But it's not a slight to say to somebody. Uh, you don't want someone to say it to you if you feel like you're looking good. But if you're like, yeah, I'm worn out. And you're like, yeah, me being worn out is showing on the outside, on the exterior. Now, sobriety. Sobriety is the quality of being sober. It's a noun. Uh, if you have sobriety, if you are experiencing sobriety, it's being sober. Now, this is about kind of temperance and moderation in the use of alcohol. I'm just say not using it at all. It can occasionally be used for the idea of being serious or solemn. That's usually going to be more for the adjective form of sober. Um, to behave in a sober fashion is taking things seriously in addition to not drinking. Sobriety pretty much always is about um, substances, alcohol, recreational drugs, things of that nature. Um, sometimes people use it in a possessive of my sobriety. I need to take care of my sobriety. I need to make sure I stay sober, things like that. Now, a caricature is a portrayal of something that greatly exaggerates aspects of it to kind of mock it. Now, this can be a picture or a drawing. You think of those people on, like, uh, at the fair, at the boardwalk, if you go down to Venice Beach, who are drawing pictures of others. They are producing caricatures. They give you a bigger nose than you really have. They make your forehead bigger than it really is. Things that you're kind of self-conscious about. They pick them out, your worst features, and they make them more prominent in order to, you know, playfully make fun of you. It can also be used to describe something that's been inaccurately reported for personal gain. You can make a caricature of a situation, right? And only say the bad things that are going on in order to cause a certain amount of uh, discomfort for others to, to skew the facts in your favor. So you can present a caricature of what's really going on. Oh, my classes are always so crazy. Everyone's just off task, blah, blah, blah. Ah, that's a caricature of what's going on. My classes are maybe a little bit more wild. But certainly they're not out of control or anything. We're just generally having a good time in a more casual atmosphere. To say it's out of control or we don't get work done would be highly inaccurate. To frolic. We might frolic on occasion. Now, it can be used to imply having great fun. Oh, it's a frolic. We had a great time. That's the noun form of it. The verb form of it is to be basically running around and jumping and playing. For some reason... It's usually mentioned in combination with a field or the outdoors. They went and frolicked among the flowers in the field. They were frolicking in the park. It nearly always is outdoors. I'm not really sure why, but that is how it's used. It implies a kind of lightheartedness and not taking things seriously. As a result of that, it can be used derisively. It can be used as a basically an insult against someone else to indicate that they're not serious about something. Uh, there they are frolicking around when we got work to do kind of thing, right? So it can be used to say that someone's not a, well, a serious person. Now, elated. A lot of things here that are kind of adjusting peaks and valleys of really serious, really not serious. So to be elated is someone who's extraordinarily happy and excited. Proud is a curious way to put it. They're, they're, they're pleased with the results of something, right? Someone who's in really high spirits or jubilant. Now, Elated is about as intense as it gets. 
elated is an incredibly strong feeling of joy. So happy that you become lightheaded as a result, right? Think about when people have just become engaged. Oh my God, they said yes. Oh my gosh, they proposed. And they're jumping around all excited like, oh, they've accepted me for the rest of their lives, right? That's elation. That'd be the noun of it is elation. You just won the lottery. The Powerball right now is at like $2 billion. Anyone who wins that is going to be elated. Everything in their life has changed, presumably for the better, unless, well, I guess it depends how they handle it. All right, Brian. Brian is any saline solution, meaning a liquid full of salt, okay? So uh, salt and water solutions, brines, can be used in cooking. They're using chemistry. Um, they're using IV bags and medicine. There's all kinds of things. You could call any of those a brine. Usually, though, when you're talking about a brine, you're talking about one that's being used in cooking. You can brine a turkey. You can brine and make pickles. The ocean is also often referred to, particularly in like kind of pirate-like circles, as a brine because it's salt water, right? Oh, the briny sea kind of thing. Uh, so brine is, is salt water, basically. Now, burly. Oh, man. Just a picture of me there? No, I'm kidding, of course. Um, this word is used to describe someone who's big and strong. The, they're kind of solidly built. They're not necessarily ripped or lean in their musculature, but they're big and solid. Think of like a like a lineman in a football game, right? It's a burly guy. Uh, someone who is a, a power lifter is burly, right? They're not necessarily ripped, but they're powerful and they're big. That's burly. Now, it can be used some, for something that's not a human. A dog could be burly. Even like the shape of, say, a, I don't know, a car or something can have kind of a burly shape to it, right? Real like muscular kind of shape. Uh, a lot of pickup trucks have kind of a burly kind of feel to them versus a sleek feel. Like a sports car would never be described as burly. They're sleek and smooth and all about kind of cutting through the air. Pickup trucks are about powering through the air. They're not aerodynamic at all. So that'd be burly. Now nostalgic. The the experience of feeling nostalgic, is an, it's an adjective, uh, is just that. It's an experience and a feeling. But it's one in which the individual is yearning for what came before. They're thinking fondly or longingly for things from their past. Okay? A time, a place, a situation. When you graduate high school, you might feel nostalgic for high school. You might wish you were still back there in some way and think on it fondly. It's not the same thing as missing it exactly. It's kind of transporting yourself in your memories to those happy experiences. Now, the noun form is nostalgia. I have nostalgia for a lot of 1980s movies because they're movies I watched when I was a kid. UHF, Tron, Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Like, If pressed, I always say Pee-wee's Big Adventure is my favorite movie of all time. It's not necessarily a great film, but I have a lot of nostalgia for it. It warms my heart in a way. It takes me back to being a little kid. Uh, you could have nostalgia for a food. There's something that your grandma made that just reminds you of the holidays. You eat it or you smell it. And just, oh, you're taken back to that moment. That is feeling nostalgic. That is a nostalgia. You might feel nostalgic when you see Christmas trees and think of holidays or whatever it might be. Moments with friends. It doesn't just have to be family. But it's always something from your past. That's really important. Anthropomorphic. Anthropomorphic is an adjective. It's used to describe any non-human thing given human traits. Pretty much every cartoon character, you know, when they're, when they're not humans, think of like uh, We Bear Bears. Think of Zootopia, right? These are anthropomorphic characters. They're animals that have been given human traits. The bears and We Bear Bears. They still look basically like bears, but they can talk and they, you know, have jobs and things like that. On Zootopia, they all have basically human anatomy and then animal-esque heads, although human mouths too, so they can speak and not look terrifying. Now, when things are given kind of human abilities, but not treated in an anthropomorphic fashion, it can become kind of terrifying. The Lion King remake didn't work. That's a bad movie. In part, it's bad because the animals were not anthropomorphic enough. They just look like lions and gorillas and all the rest. And it was kind of spooky when they spoke. It was unsettling. Lion King, the original cartoon, those are anthropomorphized. Oh, there's the uh, verb form of it, past tense verb form of it. So anthropomorphized, and then anthropomorphized would be the past tense of that. Um, the word's often used with deities and other world religions as well. But more or less, if a non-human thing is given human traits, it has become anthropomorphic. 
arbitrary. Something that's arbitrary is something that was decided upon for no reason other than that's what that person wanted to do. An arbitrary decision, or something that's decided arbitrarily, is something that's decided eh, just because that's what they wanted to do. It implies a carelessness that they don't care what the effect is on others. It has a very negative connotation. It's not like being on a whim, like a playful, oh, maybe we'll go have lunch. Arbitrary is, I don't care what the impact is on others. I'm just going to do it. Who gives a damn? It's not a good thing. It implies the person making the decision didn't care what the consequences would be for others. Oh, should we uh, have a pop quiz today? Oh, I'll flip a coin. Yeah, we're having a pop quiz. That's a terrible thing to do to someone. Pop quizzes are super unfair. Student didn't have a chance to prepare for it. Now, I just decided it, like out of boredom. That's an arbitrary decision with negative consequences for them that I'm just not taking seriously. Often, fascistic and dictatorial judgments are seen as arbitrary. When people have a lot of power and they don't have a lot of compassion for those they have power over, they will make arbitrary decisions. If you think about really, truly terrible leaders through world history, they were often arbitrary in their punishments. Ah, execute them. Who cares? They would make these arbitrary decisions just because they didn't care. Kudos. That's kind of the opposite, really. Uh, we really are going through peaks and valleys in the words this week. Kudos are a kind of compliment and verbal award given to someone who's worthy of honor or glory or acclaim. They're kind of like congratulations and a compliment at the same time. You can say, hey, kudos to someone. You can just say, eh, kudos. And it means like, well done. You did a good job. I'm impressed, right? You can also say, oh, you deserve kudos. Oh, kudos to you. That would mean that you are also giving them kudos, but in a more kind of like, I don't know, removed fashion. You can also say that someone deserves kudos for all the things they've done. Like, oh, they've done all this great stuff. They should be awarded and congratulated and recognized for these great things they've done. That would be getting kudos. I really like the word kudos. I think it's really great. I use it quite a bit. Oh, kudos. Well done. It's also fun to say. I don't know. It's a great word. Dysphoria. Oh my God, peaks and valleys. This is definitely a valley. This is definitely a downer. Dysphoria is a psychological condition. It's one that's used in psychiatry to discuss a diagnosis of someone. Dysphoria is a condition where in our minds, in our, in our true like belief, we find ourselves completely dissatisfied, anxious, restless, and unable to find joy in the world. It's the opposite of euphoria. You can see that for you there. We're talking about life and feelings. So euphoria is you feel as, as good as you can. It's the greatest feeling that there is, right? A love of life, feelings of ecstasy and joy. Dysphoria, kind of like dystopia, right? A dystopia is the opposite of a utopia, right? Perfect world, horrible world. A dysphoria is nothing in life is good. You cannot experience joy and you cannot find it anywhere. It's a constant unease with how everything is around you. It's just, it's not exactly depression because depression is a, it's a tough distinction to make. Depression is everything is sad. Dysphoria is the world's just terrible and there's nothing to feel good about anyway. There's a, there's a, there's a difference there. They can result in largely the same thing. And I'm willing to bet that many of those who are diagnosed with dysphoria would also be di diagnosed with depression because there is a similarity there but they're not precisely the same thing. All right, those are the words. That was it. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you find some cool things to learn. I will see you all next week. Good luck on your quizzes.